right, hello my children. So all I'm gonna show you how to do today is how to fake lights and shadows. So um, I'm gonna set up a method of a camera that captures the ground that you're walking on. And depending on the, the average value of it, if it's light or dark, your model will change. That's essentially it. This can work with vertex painting. This can work with external light maps that you bake in Blender. Um, super lightweight. It can be used for low end devices, mobile, tablets. Okay, so now that we have our scene here, um, I'm just going to skip the Blender part. You should already have your level or already created or whatever. Um, but yeah, I'll test. I'll show you that this works in both with your light, your light maps, as well as the vertex. So, first thing you're going to need to do is have yourself a character controller. You should already have one. If you don't, I'll leave a link to a video so you can make one, and then you can come back here. So all we're going to do is we're going to create a image that is um, constantly registered. Or excuse me. Yeah, we're gonna create an image uh, that's gonna be taken from the ground that the player is currently standing on. It's going to go through the entire image itself and it's gonna find out its average value and then it's going to manipulate the player's model dependent on if it's dark or light. So the first thing you're gonna to need to add to your player is a sub view container. Um, I'm not sure if you saw it when I was playing this, but um, uh, there is a little tiny speck right up here. That is the image that is on the floor. All this is going to do is just going to allow us to change that and we move it off screen. That way it's not on the, the way anymore. Then after that, you're going to add a child to the sub view. Uh, excuse me. You're going to add a child to the sub view container. And that one is going to be a sub view port. This is going to be used for the actual images itself. So this is going to be the floor the player is currently standing on. It's going to be transferred right to this viewport. Um, it has a size by default of 512 by 512. It doesn't need to be that big. So just move it down to something like eight. Eight seems to work pretty fine. Um, if you keep it at 512 or bigger, uh, it's gonna severely slow down your, your game and then it's gonna defeat the purpose of actually using this in the first place. Then after that, you're gonna need a node to this uh, viewport. Um, this is just going to be a spot for the camera to, to latch onto. Uh, what we're gonna do is use this node 3D to follow the player, and then the camera 3D itself is gonna follow that node. Now you need the camera 3D um, because this sub viewport is gonna be using this camera to capture that data that's on the floor. So, and the way that happens is, as you can see here, I have the camera pointing straight down at the ground roughly right where the knees would probably be if uh, this was an actual player model. But because it's a capsule, you can't see it. But um, this is just so that it doesn't really capture any walls or any other objects. Um, one thing you can do, and I have done it right here, is you can use a culling mask. So I only have objects on three for this to render. And I also have here within these levels, the meshes that I want uh, the camera to capture. I also put them on level three as well. So anything I don't want it to capture will be on other layers. Uh, excuse me. If there's anything I don't want it to capture, it will be on the other layers. Okay. And that takes care of this little um, set here. So all this is doing is setting up the nodes so it can capture the floor data that uh, the player would be currently standing on. Okay. Then after that, I need you to add a texture progress bar. I just named it light meter. All this is going to do is once the data is collected from the ground, it's just going to round up that data to the closest zero or one. So all I have here um, within the options is the minimum value will be zero, its max value will be one, and then the step uh, is what actually rounds up that number. Make sure it's zero, that way um, it gives you clean numbers. Then after that, I need you to add a node. This is just a normal everyday node called components. And then as a child of that, you add another node and call this one light influence. These nodes aren't really necessary. It's just to make sure that our our code is a little bit cleaner. As you can see here, I did add a little script here and we'll get into that in just a second. So everything here should be as it is, if that even makes sense. Just make sure your setup is like this, okay? All right, good. Now let's go into the actual code. So the first thing we're gonna do is go into the player script and we are going to add references to all the things that we just added. So on the on ready variable, add a viewport texture. That's gonna be the sub viewport that we have, which is this thing right over here right here. Uh, then we have a texture, excuse me, a viewport texture camera position that is gonna be the node 3D right here. As you can see, node 3D. 
on ready light component. This is going to be the light influence. That is the one that is a child of the component. We have the light meter, which is the texture progress bar. And then we have the get model surface, which is the actual player model that we're going to manipulate. So make sure you have all these. That way we can grab them later and uh, use them for manipulation. Ignore that. We'll get to that later. Uh, and then after that, you are going to, well, you know what? Don't even bother with this just yet because we haven't actually programmed for it. Okay, so now we're going down to the light influence. Just go up to here. It has a red mark right now, but uh, it should have a green mark if you don't have any scripts on it. So just add a little script, call it whatever you want. I believe I called this light influence script. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, I did. Okay. And now, okay, and now to start writing code into here. So right here, the very first variable that I have is a strength and light uh, variable. This is if the light is like too weak to influence your player's uh, your player's color. Uh, this is just it allows you to add extra strength to it. Um, you'll see it right down here, but we'll get to that later. Next up, a variable for the color intensity. It's going to be a float. Uh, this is how dark or light you want the model to be. Um, the color ramp for the RGB is at 255. That is the default color, and then zero is black. I just have this at 200, so it's very close to the pure color. Then after that, we're going to have a limit on how dark we want the model and how light we want the model. So I have max darkness here. Uh, that's at 5, but you can put it at anything you want. Uh, this is just to keep the model from being completely black when it's in the shadows. And then we have max light, and we also have it set to 255. Again, the default for the RGB. And this is just to prevent the colors from the model from being blown out. Uh, or making it or preventing it from the model from looking like it's glowing Okay, after that we're going to create our very first function This is called calculate lights and shadows and we are going to be passing in a parameter of player This is going to be called from the player script and then we're going to be passing in the player itself That way we can have access to all of the functions and variables that it has within that script So as you can see here we have player dot viewport texture uh, cam position dot global position is equal to player dot global position all this is doing is it's taking that node and it's making it equal to the player's global position if you remember in the player script right here the viewport is going yeah the viewport texture cam position is right here and that is let me open that up and that is that node 3d that i was talking about earlier okay then after that, we're going to create a new variable called source. And this is going to grab that viewport that we have, the sub viewport, right here. So you got C viewport texture. It's grabbing the sub viewport right here. So we have player viewport texture dot get texture. Um, all this is doing is grabbing whatever image is currently being displayed within that viewport. Then after that, we have a new variable called color and get average color source. Now this uh, get average color is actually a function that's all the way down here i'll explain exactly what that does in just a second excuse me but all we're going to do is get the average color of whatever that image is from the source and that source was the image from the viewport now down here this is not my code let's get rid of that for just a second this is not my code i found this code from somebody else i'll leave a link in the description to the video but um, long story short is all this is doing is going to grab that image from the viewport. It's going to go through the entire image pixel by pixel, and then it's going to grab the average color uh, of that image, and then it's going to return it back to us. So that's what this code is doing. So we have variable image. This is going to be whatever that texture image is. As since we called this get average color up here, we're passing in the source. So that is whatever the sub viewport is. As you can see here, so this is that sub viewport. It's getting the texture. Then it's going to resize this to a one by one. This is how many pixels it's going to read um, at a time. And I don't remember exactly what this does. Does it say here? Performs and interpretation. This is the slowest image resizing, but it typically gives the best results. Okay, there, there you go. <laughs> that's exactly what that's doing. So it's as it's downscaling this image, it's making sure that uh, it's nice and clean. And then after that, it's going to return back whatever pixel that it currently has, and then it's going to give us the average. So that's all that's doing. Uh, now that we have what the average color is. Okay, so while I was editing this, I realized uh, two things. 
Uh, one, the way I had that set up, uh, you don't actually need it. So I had, the way I had it in the uh, original video, I had something like this, color, one, one, one. Uh, and I believe I had the color luminance as well. Yeah, you don't you don't actually need that. I think you need it at the, at some point, but um, they updated it and it's no longer required. But anyway, um, all you have to do is make sure that this light level calculated is the color dot get luminance. And then two, I never explained what the heck this was. So uh, get luminance uh, essentially returns the light intensity of a color uh, as its value is between zero and one, as it shows right here. Um, so that's why we are using get luminance again. Completely just skipped over that for whatever freaking reason and uh yeah and then after that we're just going to take in that light luminance and make sure that we give it to the player light meter it's value that way it will um it will uh, round up or down making the numbers nice and neat for the characters lights and shadows okay that's all i want to add uh back to past me and then after that we're going to apply the light shadow mode, uh, excuse me. We are going to apply the light or shadow to the model. And again, we're going to be passing the player because we need, we need to grab data from it. And that function is right down here. So I'm going to go through that in just a second. So like I said before, this is being called by the player script. So if we go over here and if we go to this right here, light component, that's getting that light influence. I have it called right here. So light component dot calculate, calculate, excuse me, lights and shadows. And then we're just passing in ourself. And as you can see here, lights and shadows, and that is the player. So that's how that's, that's being ran. Okay, now to do this part here. So once we have the player's data, or once the, the once we have all that data from the player, we are, want to grab all of the materials from the current model. So here we have player model, or excuse me, player dot get model surface. Remember that is the mesh itself. It's going to get every single material that the mesh currently has. Then after that, we're going to store it into an active materials, and then we're going to have the player's model surface, and then we got we want to get active material. Uh, the reason why this is in a for loop is because we want to get every single color that it has, or every single material that it has, and that's what this x value is. So at this current point. It will be, you know, the, the first texture, the second texture, third texture, whatever. So I got to edit out another mistake. Okay, so up here I said the color intensity was a float. You don't need a float at all. I don't know why I did that. Um, <laughs> this is what happens when you uh, record after doing two doubles in a row. But anyway, um, for the next part here, um, I had it to convert it um, into ints and stuff like that. You don't need to. You could just have this as an int and then use this particular code right here. So... Uh, Listen to my explanation, but make sure that your code looks like this um, when you're done. And same thing goes for when I start explaining the bottom down here. Okay, that's all I want to add. Um, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> and then after that, um, we want to be able to set whatever that value is. So we're going to get the active material. We're going to set its albedo to a color from the RGBA. And all this is, these are is the, the red channel, the blue channel, and the green channel. So this is the RGB. So we're going to have it clamp. We're just going to clamp it to make sure that the max darkness never hits zero and that the max light never goes over its default. The player's material will be changed to a darkened uh, state. All right. Now, this is all well and good if you only have one singular model. But if you have multiple models, um, I do have a way to do that as well. And all that is, is in the ready function, just uh, create a for loop for that player model, get all of its children. So this usually would be like uh, a part of a skeleton rig or something like that. So just grab all the children to that rig. Um, and then, oh, I guess I forgot. Um, we're gonna put all of them in within a list right here. As you can see here, all models are equal to a list here. So all we're going to do is say all models append and whatever uh, whatever meshes we grab, just put them within that list. And then once you have all those models within the list, you can actually call that list from the player. So for y in player .all models size, meaning grab everything within that list, go through the list itself, get all of the materials from each of those meshes. Again, save all of those active uh, materials within a variable 
dependent on which model we're currently on, get its active material, and then again, set those active materials to the RGB. And then it will work on all of the meshes of that particular model, whether it be the player or the enemy. Okay. So if you did everything correctly, and you should have, you should get this working. Now this also works on light maps. I'm off, whoops, like so. It would still work. As you can see here, light and darkness. Right, so I think that handles everything or that's everything I need to uh, explain or teach. So thank you guys so much again for watching. Um, all the code that I have will be in my GitHub. Feel free to download it. It's gonna be in the description. Use it for whatever you want, I don't mind. Um, but again, with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something. And until next time, my children, farewell.